Hey guys, welcome back to the Guilty as Charged podcast. So happy to be joined now by Scott Dotterman, who covers the Iowa Hawkeyes for The Athletic. Scott, thanks for taking the time to join me. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Stephen. Uh, it's a beautiful Monday here in Iowa, so I can't complain. I hope everything is good for you, too. Absolutely. You know, post-draft life it, it is great. I love getting, you know, beat writers to from the universities of the players that the Chargers draft, get some information and insight on them. Uh, so we're here to talk about Nick Neiman today, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you what the Chargers are getting in their new running backs coach, Derek Foster, who obviously had a big role at Iowa as well. Yeah, Derek's kind of quiet, uh, a Southern guy. Uh, he was uh, really good at when he was at Samford and kind of caught Iowa's eye through the a couple of other um, when they when they were hired for a couple other assistants coaches jobs and they kind of kept him in their back pocket and then when NCAA allowed a tenth assistant that was a guy they called and and he really helped the running back room here I mean for a for an offense that has such a reputation about running the football and great offensive linemen they've really struggled to to get the most out of their running backs and and I think Derek did a really good job of that over the last couple of years uh there's a junior on the team he was first team all big 10 last year named Tyler Goodson I'd fully expect him to be in the draft next year I talked to an agent and the ballpark right now is probably third to fourth round and and I think Derek did a lot with him and even this year uh when his replacement is a is a guy named Liddell Betts. He was in the NFL for 10 years, uh, you know, a pretty good utility player for a long time. And, and he really touted what Derek was able to do with that room. And, and they went from, uh, you know, just kind of being impatient a little bit as a running in the zone scheme. And instead he was able to kind of get them to, to flash a little more vision to see the hole opening up. And a lot of times with those younger players that really helped them. And they ended up having uh, go, they went from a really bad 3.9 yards per carry to 4.6 in, in this, in over a year. So I, you know, it, is he going to make that those kind of miracles at the next level? No, uh, right. it's all about the players. Uh, but I do think he's a really good choice and he's a, he's just a really good person. So I, I think he's, He's got a good future as a position coach uh, for a long, long time. Awesome. Hopefully he sticks in Los Angeles for, for the next little bit. They've kind of cycled through running backs coaches over the last little bit. So that'll be good for to have him on, hopefully for the long term. Um, all right, let's get to the, the, the featured topic here, which is Nick Neiman. Um, you know, I think people have this kind of stereotype of when they think of like a white Big Ten linebacker. Um, that doesn't really fit Nick Neiman's bold. So what was kind of... Or, or let me say this, where were you kind of expecting him to get drafted in, in terms of like round? And then what was your reaction when the Chargers did eventually call his name? Yeah, I, I would say after last season, I would say based on his production, his size, his speed, I thought he would probably be a late round selection. His, his older brother, Ben, as we all know, is, has been with the Chiefs for a couple of years. He was a, a priority free agent for the Chiefs and has been a really good sub package guy, special teamer. And Nick really fits that. Now, Nick's a little bit taller, a little bit faster than Ben. Ben had a little bit better resume at Iowa. And part of that was uh, the Big Ten has changed schematically, and he was kind of at, at the mercy of that. Nick was a little bit because Iowa traditionally ran a 4-3 with kind of a Leo outside backer that oftentimes walked over the slot and, and would cover either the, the tight end or the, or the slot. And, and uh, that just didn't seem to work. There were a few quicker players that got took the advantage of Nick, and, and especially in one game against a heated rival in Wisconsin, and and uh, he got injured on the play. So they switched to a four-two-five, which kind of left him more, uh, you know, in the lurch a little bit, just as far as where is he going to line up. Well, he ended up kind of moving his way inside to kind of a weak side linebacker role, and that seemed to really fit him well because. You know, there's a there's as a perception as you mentioned of kind of this sledgehammer inside linebacker that's too slow. They run a four yeah. nine. They're yeah, they'll they'll they're they're good at goal line, but that's about it. No, he's a really good player in space. Um, you know, he was just trying to cover a four three slot receiver that was really difficult for him at times. But uh, I I think when the way he played, he really played his best football last year. Uh, you know, through an eight game you know abbreviated season and. Um, 
so I, I thought I expected him. And then I'd heard some good things about his times kind of in the off season. He went to Nashville and trained there um, and then came back and his pro day just, it was just incredible. Um, you know, this three cone at, at 6.67. I mean, that was only two linebackers that ever have had better times than that in the three cone, which really shows his uh, ability to kind of move laterally and, yeah. and quickly. And uh, his 40 time was great. Uh, so I expected him to get drafted because at a bare minimum of what you're going to get with Nick Neiman is a guy who's going to probably be a sub package guy, maybe play 10 to 15 snaps a game. And then on every special team, and those guys are valuable, uh, especially at, uh, you know, for, you know, when you're kind of churning through a roster. So I thought at a minimum, that's what a team's going to get. And I, I know this, the Chargers have a pretty good secondary and, and they're now going, you know, with Brandon Staley as that coach. I, I think that he's probably a good piece. Is he a starter? Eh, I, don't, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Maybe he is in two to three years, but I do think he, at a minimum, he's got great leadership skills. He's your heart, typical good things you, you stereotype about an Iowa or a Big Ten guy. Hardworking, comes in, does his job. So I think for a lot of defenses, that's that's what you need. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, that obviously has that kind of role definitely carries a lot of value, especially for a team like the Chargers, who were historically bad on special teams last year. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned his leadership skills. You mentioned, you know, he had an injury and, and kind of got benched. How did you see Nick Neiman grow as a person and as an individual while at Iowa? You know, early on, he was just kind of this this athlete behind his brother. They played the exact same position, that Leo outside linebacker. And, uh, you know, Ben has a lot of characteristics that, that Nick was able to grow into. And, you know, Nick was kind of the older brother. So the leadership was maybe a little bit more natural, a little bit more organic, where Nick was a little bit quieter. But Nick got forced into it a little bit this year in particular when he did move inside uh, to, there were a couple of opt-outs on the inside linebacker spot and and then there were a couple of injuries in camp so he had to start right away at middle linebacker and you could just tell by his efficacy maybe the his mannerisms the the, the intangibles that aren't real apparent you know on paper or whatever but you can tell by just the way he carries himself that he's a voice in the room he's a guy that everybody kind of respects and responds to and uh, this turned out to be a really good defense as a whole uh they were you know number one in points allowed uh or yards allowed per play and top five in points allowed so and he was at the center of that because he was making a lot of the calls especially when there was a lot of injuries at linebacker so um you could see that part of it his game grew he was able to uh you know make be more physical and assertive i think early on he was kind of pigeonholed a little bit like his brother he's going to just fit in that that uh spot uh, but by the end of it, they realized, hey, he's a little bit more athletic and active and probably should be in more in the center of the defense. Well, that's great that you mentioned that he's able to kind of adjust on the fly because, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I was fully comfortable with the Chargers linebacking court staying healthy. And so I, I think, of, you know, eventually Nick Neiman's probably gonna have to play some games this year. Uh, and it seems like, you know, he, he has the temperament to kind of adjust on the fly and maybe excel in that kind of role, too. Yeah, I think he's, I think his best possibilities, just judging early on would be probably more of a, of a sub package guy that maybe if you're going to a, a three, two, six on longer passing downs, maybe he's one of your two backers because he can cover probably if you're talking about a zone, maybe that linebacker zone where tight ends come into it, he can handle that just fine. Um, you know, to play middle might be a bit much for him right away. But I do think he can play over the tight end if you're, uh, you know, whatever the, the main package is, uh, he can kind of rotate and move. So by, by year two or three, I think he'd be very comfortable as a, you know, every down type of player. Now, injuries, who gets drafted over him, all that stuff is, is right. hard to say. I'm just kind of making his linear projection as, as a by, you know, year three, I think he could be a real valuable member of that defense. And, and again, his, his brother kind of shows you what he's capable of. I think his brother had a little bit bigger resume at Iowa, but at, however, Nick has more athletic upside. So there is potential for him to be um, a very good defender. I'm not going to go as far as say pro bowl or anything like that, but I think he can be a guy that 
you can put them on your defense and feel like, all right, we don't need the upgrade there, especially in year three or four, if he hits those projections. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a safe call. Um, I'm interested though, because I mean, the the two brothers played at Iowa. Now they're going to be division rivals with the chiefs and the chargers. What's that going to be like for the family? That's going to be really fun to watch in some ways. I mean, their, their dad, Jay, uh, is a, a, an assistant coach at Iowa. So, you know, they've all went, and it was really kind of cool in this, in that period where the chiefs won the super bowl, because, uh, Iowa went to the holiday bowl and won and Nick Neiman had a pick six against USC. And then a couple weeks later, a month later, whatever it was, uh, they all went together and, and, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl and they were all there for that. So going head to head there, they are very competitive. I mean, there were times when, uh, you know, the older teammates would give Ben a hard time <laughs> about his younger brother being able to beat him in a race and stuff. And you can see <laughs> even in those, you know, and Nick is, and, and both of them are just fantastic humans, but you can see Ben was a little irritated by that. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's not going to beat me though. You know, just that kind of thing, you know, like, so I, I imagine if they get lined up like kick off versus kick return or punt versus punt return, uh, they're going to be throwing down. And uh, I'm in- interested for Jay because there was one point where he was at Rutgers. He was a defensive coordinator and his sons had to go to Rutgers to play against him. And I think it was 2016. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it, I remember talking to him about that and it was very difficult because it was one thing for him to actually scheme against Iowa's offense, but it was another thing to go, well, <laughs> I do kind of want to watch my son play on the same field. Right. So and that, that was a challenge for him. That's funny. We, we've seen, you know, obviously Derek Watt from Wisconsin was on the Chargers. Yeah. So we've seen some Watt brother battles, but, you know, Derek being a fullback didn't play a whole lot. And so, you know, getting a brother rivalry like this one is going to be a lot of fun to watch over the next couple of years. Oh, for sure. And, and they're both great guys. So I, I would imagine that, you know, it, but they'll be very competitive and it, it won't be uh, Hey, I'm going to love tap you. I mean, they'll thump. Each other. <laughs> you know, they've done that in practice. And, and I'll say this one thing that I, I kind of wondered about Nick, cause he is a little bit taller than Ben. He's, you know, six, four pushing, you know, between 235 two forty, is I always thought he would be really good if they flipped him to the other side of the ball and be a tight end. I just, so mm-hmm. I could see, a role for him like on field goal and kind of being like a wing back type or even a tight end type and and at some point maybe that'll come into play for a, a fake or something like that but but by you know his his position of course is linebacker and i think that's he'll be uh at like i said he'll, at a minimum he'll be a core special teamer sub package yeah. guy and, and really help out in those margins because obviously the chargers have a heck of a quarterback coming back Absolutely. So Scott, this has been awesome, man. I cannot thank you enough for joining us to talk about Nick Neiman and Derek Foster. Chargers fans, if you want any scoop on the Iowa Hawkeyes, make sure and follow Scott at Scott Dodgerman on Twitter and The Athletic at The Athletic CFB. Scott, thank you so much, man. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Appreciate it.